All right, let's talk about some utilities. Uh, utilities kind of, uh, I've kind of categorized them as, as, there's three different categories here. Uh, we have the page level utilities, which deal with just a specific page. Application, which deals with just an application. And workspace, which deals with all of the applications or things about um, a, a workspace that you would like to manipulate. Um, the page level utilities uh, that I find can be extremely helpful. One, uh, there is no delete button. You will not find uh, a big delete button to click on in Apex. And oftentimes I get asked, why is that? How come I, there's no big delete button for me to click on to delete this page? Well, here's the thing. Um, when you're building a user interface, you want to think about the things that your users are going to do often. One of the things that your users or a developer in the builder is not going to do very often is delete a page. So the Apex team kind of decided, well, you know what? This page doesn't warrant a delete button kind of at the top level. It's not something that we do very often. We save and run all of the time. That better be loud and noisy and easy for us to interact with. It even has shortcuts to make it happen. So if you want to get to the delete button, uh, you have to go to this delete menu or the utilities menu uh, and actually select this here. So there's where the delete button is hiding. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, if you have never used the paid or the advisor, uh, advisor will point out issues that are in your application uh, and uh, it just reads the metadata and looks for anomalies and says, ooh, based on the metadata, this is problematic. You might want to deal with it. Um, if you've never seen the advisor before, I'll just show you real quick. There is even a shortcut to open it Contro and we'll, we'll do the uh, shortcut control slash U A and whoop, advisor pops up. And I'll go ahead and say perform checks. And it's going to read the metadata just about this page and look for uh, potential issues. There might be some, there might not be. Um, I'm actually not sure uh, if this page uh, will report back issues or not. Ooh, we got all sorts of issues. Um, what's it saying? Uh, region source uh, referring uh, check references of page items in a string. Ah, so it's saying here um, that this might be problematic. In this case, uh, we can see that uh, this is a false positive. Um, so it did see that there's an item referenced in a string, uh, but looking at this code, we can see actually, nope, that's actually okay. And maybe uh, we want to get rid of that warning altogether. So we'll say, actually, you know what? References page items in a string. I'm just gonna just disable all warnings. I don't wanna see those. So then we'll say, apply my filter, and then I shouldn't see that alert anymore, but I will see some other things. Uh, here's a good example here. It says um, F question mark P. It's not passed through apex util .prepare URL. This might be problematic. I would agree, actually. I think that should probably change. We found something that we could fix. Thank you, advisor. Um, in terms of the checks that are performed, um, there is a big array of options that you can pick. Um, they're all kind of turned on by default, but you can kind of you know, deselect and turn on whatever you want to look at at the moment. Advisor is fantastic. Um, it is possible to export a page. So uh, the, when I would use export page is if um, I'm planning on do a whole, to do a whole bunch of development on a page and it's kind of experimental, I'm really just going to hack up the page. Either I'll copy the page uh, to a new page and, and, and hack it up there, or I'll just export the page before I start developing. I'll hack it up and do all sorts of stuff. And then when I'm done and I kind of realize what, I, what I'd want or I have a, a heading or a direction, um, I'll import my page back in and then I'll make the change. That way, if I had any sort of weird side effects from the changes that I made, um, I'm kind of mitigating uh, potential weird issues. And the other thing, this one's kind of silly, um, but toggle tooltips. Um, as you mouse over and do things on a page, you will get tooltips. And I find several times as I mouse over a component, uh, oh, I think I have it toggled off. Yep, I do. So I'll say show tooltip. And now when I mouse over something, I kind of get this tooltip. I find that oftentimes that tooltip gets just, just gets in the way and doesn't really provide a lot of benefit to me. So uh, what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll actually disable that tooltip. So now when I mouse sit here, uh, it's no longer in the way. It's a little small thing, but I like not having that tooltip, to be honest. 
in terms of application utilities, one of the things that I think is extremely helpful is uh, change history. Uh, when were things changed in my application? Um, and, uh, you know, well, where do I go to uh, see these things? Well, let's check this out. If I go to my application, here I have my application level utilities. And there are so many different options that you can click on. Uh, change history, it'll even that same advisor, but scoped the entire application. I think that's wonderful. Um, uh, if you just want a high level summary of your application, I think that's great. Um, there is, There are some uh, cross page utilities that I, I, I will show you that I, I think can be extremely helpful. I'm gonna go over to cross page utilities. Um, and you can actually grid edit all of your pages at the exact same time. Uh, a select few attributes, but they are important ones. Let me show you. So if you want to if you want to rename a whole bunch of pages, you want to change the title of a whole bunch of pages, you want to adjust the template of a whole bunch of pages, you want to pick authorization schemes for a whole bunch of pages. Here you go. Um, in the next release, uh, Apex 20.1, uh, we have pretty uh, uh, or they're not calling them pretty URLs. They're called uh, friendly URLs, uh, which rely very heavily on page alias. Well, guess what? We can come in here and grid edit all of the page aliases uh, of our pages. Fantastic. I don't have to go page by page to make this happen. If I want to search for particular pages, I can. I can say title contains and I can search for something. So I'll say anything that has to do with an order. And I'll say go. And we'll see if there's any pages that have orders in it. Order, order, order. Great. So now I have all my order stuff and I'll want to fix those. Something like that. Um, another helpful utility that um, I, I use uh, fairly regularly, I would say, is uh, it's not actually found here in utilities, uh, but it's actually found inside of shared components. And the one that I use very regularly uh, is uh, in templates, or uh, is it in themes? Da, da, da. Yeah, it's actually I have to go into the themes. Yeah. Oops. It's over, it's over here on the right hand side. It was templates. I always I always uh, I've I've tried to learn to trust my gut uh, on these things because like when you try to think about it too much, um, you get uh, um, you you overthink it. Uh, you just kind of let your primal brain direct you around. But it's this little guy right here. It sounds super simplistic, but it's awesome. Replace templates. Sometimes you might have a template. Um, you want to go from template A to template B. But maybe you have 400 items that you need to change. Like, for example, maybe you're upgrading to Apex 18.1 and you want to use the new floating item template. So what I could do is I could say, hey, I want to replace some templates in this application. Related to my desktop, uh, I want to change a whole bunch of um, uh, labels for my items. And I want to go from, you know, maybe we're using, you know, optional. And I want to go from optional to optional floating next. And maybe this will find some things in this application. Wow, it did. Actually, it found 44. So this is going to do a bulk update to my application. Uh, for, 44 instances are going to be updated. Um, now, obviously, do this in a demo, a sample application first to make sure that the changes are what you want and kind of see what some of the fallout might be of doing this. Um, but uh, it can be extremely helpful for larger applications. I'm going to cancel. I'm not actually going to follow through with that. The other option, which seems kind of silly, but I like it, uh, is also it's also in shared components. And actually, if I do control slash uh, lists, um, I do want to go to my shared component list. So let's go ahead and uh, check that out. And uh, it doesn't really matter what list we're looking at. Um, we'll just do the navigation menu. it does matter. We need to have something. There you go, report tabs, fantastic. Um, so oftentimes, if you want to reorder these lists, you want to resequence how things are being displayed, you have to kind of come in and you have to change these like sequence numbers, right? So maybe I want customer map to be after sales. So I have to pick a number that's between 30 and 40. So I'm going to edit this and I'm going to make this 35. Apply changes. 
Now, what should happen is it's now between those two, but my sequencing kind of is, is a little goofed up. So what I do is over here on the right-hand side, when I'm all done making changes, uh, I'll just say resequence lift entries. Uh, resequence, please. And so now everything will step by 10, and it's still in that order that I just had a second ago, and everything's kind of nice and pretty. Do you have to do that? No, but I think it's just one of those nice things to stay up on. Uh, workspace utilities, um, these are kind of looking at multiple applications. Uh, and I'm just only going to look at a couple options here because uh, we're going to get tight on time. Uh, and let's just do the build and app status and build options because I think those are the, the most important ones. Uh, occasionally, I will do application comparison, but I'll be honest, I don't use that one a ton, but it can be really helpful when you have two different versions of an application and you want to see what's different about them or if any pages have differences. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, application comparison can be helpful, uh, but um, it's not necessarily uh, as detailed as um, a diff, okay? But it will let you know that there are high level differences between two applications. All right, build, uh, build app status and build options. Let's talk about those. Uh, so when you come into uh, an application, uh, there are uh, build options that, that we can uh, take a, a look at. And actually, um, uh, build options is, is really more of like an application level. Um, I probably should have put that on the other slide, but hey. Uh, when you're in an application, inside of shared components, there's this little option here called build options. And I find that um, sometimes they're hard to use or uh, developers maybe don't always use them. I think there are two build options that you should use. Commented out and dev only. Commented out basically just means that you can flag a component to be commented out. You won't see it. Uh, and dev only means that you will see it in this environment, but the second you export it, it automatically turns off. And it's that automatic part that I think is important. Um, because when you go to the next environment, you want to make sure that you know, anything that you do automatically, uh, you can't screw up, right? I screw things up all the time. Um, and so uh, if it, uh, to help myself make sure that I don't screw it up, I'd make it automatic and now I'm covered. Okay, nobody's perfect. In this case, they've actually called it excluded. Uh, and just to show you how to use a, a build option like that, I can go to any component. I'll go to edit page one. I'll click on uh, a any component, search. Maybe I don't want search at the moment. If I click this little drop down here, um, I can actually come down and, and uh, I'll say configuration. And there's my build option. And I'm gonna say excluded. I didn't delete it, I didn't get rid of it. It's still there, all the metadata, every, everything about it is there. But now when I save and run, uh, there was a search, um, I think like at the top of this page and it's gone. Not not there anymore. Okay. So when creating those build options, uh, you can see this is uh, the configuration for commented out. This is the configuration for dev only. You can see that commented out is exclude exclude. That means don't don't ever show this thing. And dev only is in, include exclude. That means it's okay in this environment. It's not okay when I go to the next environment. And that's really helpful if you have um, things that you want in dev but don't want in test or production. 